Summer might be over, but the sun never really takes a break. So let's talk about the sun and how it can damage the eyes. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Dr. Sarah Blackwelder. I am an eye doctor practicing in Austin, Texas. And today I want to talk about the sun and how it can have effects on the eyes. I know that summer has come to a close regardless of whether I accept it or not. I'm a summer girly like through and through and I just don't like the fact that we are going into winter. Even though I now live in Austin, Texas and to be honest the summer heat this summer was brutal. I just, I don't know. I miss the days where the sun sets at like 9 o'clock and now that it's starting to set at 8, oh I just... Mm. It's just not my favorite, you know, but it is what it is. I have to accept reality and move on into fall. But just because we are going into fall doesn't mean that you can forego UV protection, sunglasses, any type of UV protection when you are outside in the sun because the sun can have really damaging effects on your eyes. So let's get into it. There's actually a lot of well-known benefits to getting at least some level of sun exposure during the day. Sun exposure increases vitamin D levels, which can help bones grow strong as well as boost your immune system. Sunlight's shown to boost your mood and actually not getting enough sunlight is linked to low serotonin levels, which can contribute to depression. Getting some sunlight in the morning can actually help you regulate your circadian rhythm, which in turn can help you get a better night's sleep. And there might actually be a positive link between sun exposure and preventing high blood pressure. But getting too much sun exposure can in turn have detrimental effects to our health. The most common one you might be familiar with is skin cancer. So especially for People with lighter skin, it's really important to wear some type of sunscreen when you go outside to help prevent skin cancers. Let's talk about how excess sun exposure can affect the eyes, and we're gonna work our way from the front of the eye all the way to the back of the eye. First, you can actually get a sunburn of the eye. It's known as photokeratitis, and it is an irritation and inflammation of the cornea, the clear tissue on the front of the eye. Most commonly, this sunburn actually happens in the snow. So if you think that you're in cold weather conditions and are impervious to excess UV exposure, definitely think again. You want to wear goggles, UV protection anytime you're in the snow because you are getting two types of UV exposure, one from overhead and one from reflections off of the snow itself. So a lot of people who ski or snowboard are really prone to getting this type of sunburn. Excess sun exposure is also linked to growths on the front of the eye known as pterygia or pinguecula. Although these growths are very different from one another, they are both made worse by too much time in the sun. Pterygia are a growth of fibrovascular tissue that starts on the white part and slowly encroaches into the cornea or the clear tissue on the colored part of the eye. Although pterygia are benign, they can eventually need to be removed because they can cause significant irritation or change your prescription quite a bit. Pinguecula are much smaller growths that stay on the white part of the eye and they don't encroach into the cornea or into your central vision. But regardless, both of these growths are affected by excess sun exposure as well as excess wind exposure. Excess sun exposure is also linked to certain types of skin cancer, specifically to melanoma, and you can get these around the eyelid area. So that's why it's so important to wear sunscreen around this area as well as wear sunglasses because that can prevent the orbital area here from receiving too much UV exposure. Inside of the eye is the lens and that is the clear tissue that changes shape to help us focus at multiple distances. And this lens actually absorbs a significant amount of UV light and over time it will turn from a clear color into a cloudy color and that's what we call a cataract. Eventually, once that lens becomes too cloudy or that cataract becomes too dense, like this one here, that's when it's time for cataract surgery because these significantly reduce your vision. And although they don't cause permanent vision loss, they can cause a lot of reduced vision or nighttime glare and reduce contrast sensitivity until they come out. Inside the eye in the retina, you can actually experience something called solar retinopathy. And this is basically a sunburn of the retinal tissue itself. Now, remember the retina sends signals of light to your brain. So if this area is damaged, you will notice a scotoma or kind of a blind spot and usually these are right in the center of your vision or just kind of off to the center of your vision 
To be honest, you can really only get solar retinopathy if you are direct sun gazing or looking at a solar eclipse for too long. So definitely don't do either one of these things and definitely don't do it without UV protection. Some studies have actually linked to excess UV exposure to age-related macular degeneration or AMD, which is a condition that affects your central vision. And although it doesn't directly cause macular degeneration, it might increase your risk. So protecting your eyes from excess UV exposure can help lower this risk as well. So quick recap of sun damage to the eyes. We have sunburn of the cornea or the retina. We have excess growths like cancers or pterygia and pinguecula. We have cataracts and we have a link to macular degeneration. I think there's a couple of easy precautions that you can take when you are going outside or you know you're going to be around the sun. The first thing would of course be to wear sunscreen and this goes for the skin as well as the area around the eyelids. I do recommend at least a little bit of sunscreen around this area as well to protect the eyelids because the eyelid skin is some of the thinnest skin on the body and it's very susceptible to UV damage. The next would be to of course wear sunglasses and this goes for outside as well as in cloudy conditions and in the car as well when you're driving. You want to make sure that sunglasses provide full UV protection, meaning 100% UV blocking and they block both UVA and UVB rays. Some sunglasses actually provide a spray on tint, but no UV protection. So you have to be really careful about that because what will happen is since they're tinted, the tint will allow your pupil to open up underneath the lens because your pupil thinks that more light needs to come in but with more light rays entering the eye and no UV protection, you're actually being exposed to more UV than if you just didn't have those sunglasses on. So you wanna make sure whatever sunglasses you're using are full UV blocking. Some clear glasses actually provide full UV protection without being tinted. The tint of course makes you more comfortable in the sun, allows your eyes to relax so that you don't have to squint. And some contact lenses do also provide a level of UV protection. They typically don't have full 100% UV protection, but they'll have some type of UV protection in them. Just ask your doctor about which ones might be right for you. Make sure you also protect your kids as well. We know that most of the UV exposure happens before 18 years of age. And so protecting your kids eyes as well as their skin is really important to prevent damage in the future. Even babies. Baby sunglasses are super cute. So I hope you found this video helpful. I personally love the sun. I love being outdoors, but I do like to take precautions against excess sun exposure. Really, it's chronic UV and sun exposure that can be really damaging to the eyes, to the skin. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!